called The Given War by Matt Parker. Now, people think about famine and they think about neighbors. Find friendly people, share in life's labors. They think of kind people who forsake sleeping at night to rescue dear neighbors from some terrible plight. They think of getting the hay in and helping with chores, old-fashioned barn raisins and friends by the school. Well, it's true that us farm folks will just give till it hurts. But it, when it comes to receiving, ain't nothing we hate worse. Now, the Judsons and the LaRucks, they were neighbors, that's true. They lived just about as close as I am here to you. Oh, they could look out the window, see each other's hay growing, and they knew when they was bailing and when they was mowing. And I don't know how it started, this two-family feud grudge, but I do know for sure now, neither family would budge. So when Jess Slurrock left a loaf of fresh bread by the Judson's front porch up there near the shed, oh, it caused quite a stir. Made the Judson's suspicious. They scowled as they ate it. It was warm and delicious. Well, that was a damn nasty thing to do. For no reason, twa'n't no one's birthday, no, not even a holiday season. Oh, it broke all the rules, made a real bad impression. To do something so nice was just a clear act of aggression. <laughs> well, we won't let them get away with it. We'll just counterattack. We'll go on up there. We'll give them something right back. But there's a problem, you see, with a real given war. You can't just return what they give you. No, you've got to give more. So the Judsons, they all thought, and the Judsons all schemed, and they brought up more presents than you ever dreamed. What they decided was modest. Nine fresh coffee cakes. Oh, they'd show best rock. She weren't the only one what could bake. They left a nice note to our friends with best wishes, and then they went on home to do chores and just wash up the dishes. Oh, they were feeling quite good, like a wrong had been righted. But they should have known better for us just too soon to get so gosh darn excited for that night while well, it snowed. In the wind, it was loud. And when the Judsons woke up, well, dang, that driveway weren't plowed. <laughs> See, the LaRocks, they had a snow plow, and as Pete stepped on the gas while plowing that driveway, he says, best wishes my ass. <laughs> this time, well, the Judsons, they struck back just as quick as they could. They took two whole days to cut and split firewood. Then they loaded up the dump truck, and that truck, well, they did park, and then they sat around the kitchen just waiting for dark. But they left two whole cords there, piled nice and neat in the snow, with a nice handwritten note saying, just in case you run low. Well, good deeds is one thing. But these damn friendly notes really steamed the LaRocks, so it did get their gold. And Pete, well, he knew what was next, for he'd seen broken glass in the Judson's barn windows the other day driving past. One day, when family, when the Judsons were with family up there out in Maine, Pete just replaced all that glass. Yes, sir, he fixed every last thing. And though Pete in his life, well, he'd never written even one poem, he invented a short one now and said, There, that'll show him. I know you can't do everything. Oh, there's just too many chores. So we have helped in one small way. I mean, is not that what neighbors are for? Oh, that was really a good one. 
Yeah, Pete knew they had the upper hand. And the Judsons, they had a hard few months. It was most more than they could stand. They fought for hours, trying to find the perfect thing. But they could not find one friendly gesture that would really make their neighbors sting. <laughs> Till one sunny day, early May, of course, John Judson, oh, he had a stroke of luck. He found Pete LaRock on his tractor, buried axle deep in the muck. Oh, well, John, he stepped out beside the road. Oh, he got out real slow. Then he called out across the field. What's the matter, Pete? Won't you go? And Pete, he would not at all amused and mumbled something about how he'd just go on home, get his other track, and pull himself right out. And John, oh, he wouldn't hear of that, no, sir. In his eyes, oh, they had quite a shine. And he says, ain't no need for that, my friend. No, sir. I'll go home and bring out mine. I mean, it ain't no trouble, none at all, to pull you out of that goo. I mean, after all you've done for us, ain't it the least a neighbor can do? Well, like any war, it took its toll. You could feel the increased tension, and the signs were just too numerous, far too numerous to mention. Now, Pete LaRuff, well, he couldn't sleep, and best she put on weight. And Johnny Judson said his ulcers, well, they was just kind of acting up. And all the children on the buses, well, they were giving away their lunches. Chicken, apples, potato chips, and even cookies by the bunches. Who knows what might have happened if it weren't for a stroke of fate? It's lucky it happened when it did. Most almost came too late. Old Ed Foster, another neighbor, while cutting his second crop, he hurt his back so gosh darn bad that why even old Ed, well, even he had to stop. And so all the neighbors, they gathered round, as farmers always will, when there's something to be done, when there's a need that must be filled. So the enemies, just like that, they became allies. They got the hay in, they did the chores, and they even baked Ed raspberry pies. And the animosity does seem to fade. Tension mostly melts when both sides in a given war can just give to someone else. But now, well, it's getting better. At least that's what I'm told. But your guess is as good as mine how long this shaky truce can hold. Best keep an eye on this situation. Oh, I really think we need to. Because with world affairs, being what they are, you know, you never know just what a given war might lead to. It's by Matt Parker.